Shalom, brothers and sisters. Let's touch base on everything happening in Israel at the moment. The latest news from the last few days. Uh, Hezbollah has hit Israel's north 1,300 times in August alone. The most in one month since October 7. And you wonder why the northern residents have had enough. The figure marked an increase of 400% compared to January this year. August was the most intense month in the conflict between Israel and Lebanon's Iran-backed Hezbollah terrorist group so far with more than 1,300 attacks on the Jewish state recorded. According to the Israel security agency Shin Bet, Hezbollah terrorists fired no fewer than 1,307 rockets, missiles and drones last month, up 20% from July alone. That's why Netanyahu has now told the military to start preparing and moving to the north. He wants to focus the bulk of his war and his attack on the north because Hezbollah is not listening. It's about time. Ben Gavir demands that Netanyahu adds defeating the West Bank terror groups to official war goals. That's Judea and Samaria. He took direct aim at the idea that allowing economic growth in the Gaza Strip would encourage quiet in that area. National Security Minister Itamar Ben Gavir addressed the letter to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Friday. He requested the defeat of Hamas and other terror organizations in Judea and Samaria be officially added as a goal of the war in the upcoming cabinet meeting. Again, don't like the man, agree with him 100%. After Hamas murder of six hostages, another Israel bashing UN Security Council meeting. The United Nations Security Council met on September the 4th, 2024, ostensibly to discuss at Israel's request Hamas cold-blooded execution of six hostages whom it had held captive since October 7. But the meeting was quickly hijacked by Algeria, a member of the council and the representative of the Arab group of states, and it immediately devolved into an Israel bashing meeting Nothing to do with the six that were executed. Hamas not called out at all. Only Israel attacked again by the UN. And it again brings me back to my point. Why even bother at this stage of the game when you can clearly see they hate your guts. They're always going to be against you and they're never going to be for you. They're literally designed to be there to be anti-Israel. So then why even bother? You know what to expect from these people. After alleged IDF shooting of Turkish American activists, Turkey's President Erdogan calls for an Islamic alliance to confront Israel. This is not the first time he's done this. We covered previously when he did this too. The only step that will stop Israeli arrogance, Israeli banditry and Israeli state terrorism is the alliance of Islamic countries, said Erdogan adding that recent improvements in relations with Egypt and Syria are aimed at forming a line of solidarity against the growing threat of Israeli expansionism. <laughs> Israeli expansionism. They are a sample tiny piece of land the size of the Kruger National Park here on my doorstep in the midst of massive broad swaths of land belonging to the Arab nations and the Muslims. But they're worried about Israeli expansionism within Israel, within that small little sliver of land. Now, the problem here for all of the Muslims and the Arabs is it would very easy if you remove God from the equation, his promises and his covenants that are everlasting, remove all of that from the equation. We can easily as sane human beings say, OK, uh, let's take the southern part of Saudi Arabia by the coast four or five times the size of Israel. They won't even miss it. And we give that to the Jews. Let's transplant all the Jews there. They've got more land. They've got ocean everywhere. They will naturally turn that into a green garden and fruits and veg and everyone will be happy. No problem. And then we give Israel back to the Arabs and the Muslims and they can have it and call it Palestine or Wakanda or whatever they want. No problem. Problem solved. You know what the problem is? God. God has put his name 
on that sliver of land. God has claimed that as his. God has entrusted that to the Jews. It is God's land. So no matter how much you scream, no matter how much you freak out, you will never own this. This will always belong to God. It's not going anywhere. It's not being transplanted anywhere. IDF destroys explosives lab hidden beneath a mosque in Janine operation. Among the destroyed terror infrastructure was a weapons depot and an explosives manufacturing lab cleverly concealed beneath a mosque. Israeli forces confiscated the large cache of weapons during the raid. These actions represent a significant blow to Hamas and other militant factions operating in Janine where terrorist activity has surged in recent months. Now I want you to think about that for a minute, logically. If it's a, a, a proper peaceful religion that just wants to serve their God with no issues, why have you got an explosives lab underneath your mosque? Why do you use your mosques to store weapons and yet you claim these are holy sites? This is where you pray and worship your God. Then your God, small g, must be a God of war and destruction and confusion and death. Yeah, that's food for thought, isn't it? When last have you popped down into your church's basement to go fetch some extra coffee or sugar, just past the hand grenades next to the chemical weapons, the other side of the AK-47s by the kids' toys, and then take the tunnel back up to the top for easy access? You remember that? Remember those days? Good times. No, because that's not what houses of worship are meant to be. That is not how you have a holy site, a place where you worship, not a place of death, destruction, plotting and evil. And this is the norm. You see this all the time. Yet no one talks about this. No one makes a thing about this. Well, I do. Pray for Israel. More and more Jews, believe it or not, even though no one's talking about it, are turning to Yeshua every day in 2024 in Israel. More and more Jews are receiving Brit Chadashah's New Testaments and being shocked when they realize it is a Jewish book written by Jews. Shocker. And it's a Jewish Messiah. Shocker. And they're giving their hearts to Jesus and realizing the truth and seeing the connection between the Tanakh and the Brit Chadashah as one revelation from God. So keep praying for them. Keep praying for all in the Middle East, both Arab and Jew, that they will all have their God experience while there is still time. Shalom.